Hello, everybody. Uh, today's uh, presentation is the office setup for the surgical implant practice. So I'm going to take you through some of those uh, specific terms and specific concepts which we like to do today uh, when we go into the office. And as you can see here, implant dentistry has evolved over the last decades. And uh, many of you who are listening to this program um, and are going to be looking at implant dentistry are probably in at a very good time because what's happening is that we're dealing here with implant dentistry which now goes for about 40 years in our programs and in our practices. Uh, in the mainstream of dentistry, it probably is about 20 years. Um, so there's 20 plus years of experience with implant dentistry, but still implant dentistry is, um, when we look at the practices around the world, is still a very small penetration when you think about the uh, consumers and the patients out there who could benefit from this type of modality or therapy. We're talking at about a and uh, penetration into the market somewhere between a few percent up to maybe 12 percent depending on the market we're talking about. Maybe a major cosmopolitan areas, 5 to 10 percent, and uh, some countries around the world where it's even higher, like Switzerland, um, because of the higher standard of healthcare. So for all those of you who are interested and now are moving into the field of implant dentistry also, to place implants in your own dental practice, this presentation uh, will be good for you to see what we do uh, in our surgical practice, which is an exclusive practice for implant uh, placement and for tissue management. And so I'll share with you some of these things which we do on a daily basis. Now first, it is important to say that the survival of implant is something which we much more today feel already to be secure about. I mean, we feel very good about the new implant uh, modalities, the implant designs and surfaces, that they can secure success rate. Um, what we are very much interested in today is to develop a certain type of quality which is up to the you know, high standards of today's practices of aesthetics as well as of comprehensive dentistry. So today, when you look at implant dentistry, it's going to be much more the quality of the implant survival, which is going to be interesting for you, and it's going to be very interesting for your patient, because this will be something which really will be conducive to the same way you're, you're trying to practice today and deliver success rates as well as enhance your practice. So we're going to be looking at, when we develop these implant office uh, uh, concepts for surgery, also at really improving the quality of survival. Um, of course, what happens is um, that we're very much today looking at implant dentistry, and here I'm going to give you an example. This is a beautiful smile line, which was created uh, with a team which uh, I was involved with in, uh, in Italy, and uh, the patient had an uh, anterior trauma, which um, fractured some of the anterior front teeth. And then after implant placement and after full ceramic restorations in the anterior maxilla, you can see here a very nice final result for this particular patient. Of course, the question is how long is this quality which we have delivered to this patient going to survive? And here you can see how in this particular case the um, result is attainable for five plus years and uh, obviously this patient is still enjoying this type of restoration and this type of result. So you can see here how this particular patient was able to um, have an, not only a survival of the implants but also have a success with the restoration. Uh, the particular case here you can see the surgical treatment and the surgical treatment here showcases that uh, two teeth were lost and had to be extracted. Immediate extractions uh, were placed and the immediate extractions here meant that one site, the lateral incisor, received an immediate uh, implant into an extraction site without a flap and the central incisor 
received an implant where we can see this here being positioned with a flap and needing a bone graft to enhance the site. Um, this, of course, is the clinical execution. What we often then do, of course, is manage these tissues in the concepts which we have today. The other question, which, of course, I want to answer today with you, is what happens on the background when you're looking at how do we organize our office? Um, and how do we organize the office when you're looking at the restorative team? Now, this particular patient, which you're looking at right now, was treated in the dental office of Dr. Mauro Fradiani in Italy. So this was a restorative office where mainly prosthodontics and um, aesthetic dentistry was being delivered to the patients. So I came in here on a uh, consultation basis and we pretty much use the concepts which we have uh, today in our uh, surgical field and we just transferred um, uh, like one of the uh, dental offices into a small surgical suite by using hygienic as well as strict guidelines which I'm going to discuss with you. So there's no need today when you're looking at implant dentistry uh, to really think that a dental office cannot be turned into also one of them into a surgical suite to do some um, surgical procedures. And um, this was one of these things where we did this. So now before we go into the surgical organization in your office, let's look at some of the aspects which are important uh, from a generic standpoint on how to pick a patient. First of all, when we do surgical procedures, we need to always define the type of patient which we're going to be treating. And you can see here, um, is the patient we're going to be looking for, is it a patient who is only missing teeth, or is there actually missing soft tissue and bone tissue and teeth? This will be slightly different because, of course, the surgical clinician will have to bring into this concept um, the augmentation which comes with this particular type of procedure. The second step, of course, is the um, aesthetic versus non-aesthetic reconstruction. And this is important for the surgical clinician because you're dealing here with precision. And when you're dealing with aesthetic treatments, you usually will have to have a precision which really goes into tenths of the millimeters. So a surgical guide stand is very important to help you. A diagnostic wax-up, as you'll see, is very important. And this all brings with it a certain amount of precision. 